as I told you in this video we are going to discuss about soil the upper layer of the earth called crust stores different nutrients that can help in sustaining life on earth but they are generally bounded in rocks and mountains over a large course of time these are rocks are break down through some chemical biological and physical processes which leads to the formation of a nutrient rich soil now let us discuss about soil profile which is nothing but the different layers of soil the soil is found in several layers which are arranged as the soil is formed the layers of the soil are also called horizons these layers have different types of soil particles and color and hands are differentiated on this basis the soil profile is defined as the vertical section of the soil that represents the sequence of layer to the soil the layers of the soil helps in understanding the usage of that soil the soil mainly consists of four layers such a soil is called mature soil some types of soil consist of two layers only and they are called a mature soil and the different horizons of the soil are the top soil or horizon a and the subsoil or horizon b and the parent material and finally it is a bedrock which is horizon r so the layers or horizons of soil the top soil or horizon a or the humus layer this layer of soil consists of organic matter and decomposed substances it is dark in color porous and can hold air and water in good amount due to such quality many living organisms are found in the top soil for example the earthworm fungi and bacteria horizon o some soils contain a layer of organic matter which consists of a large amount of decomposed leaves and humus it is called the organic layer of the soil subsoil or horizon b it lies below the top soil it is hard and compact than the top soil the subsoil has a light color because it does not contain much humus the subsoil does not contain much organic matter others but contain minerals in good quantity and metal salts like iron oxide when farmers plow their field they often mix the topsoil and subsoil so that the crops can grow easily horizon c or regolith this layer lies beneath the subsoil it is very hard and consists of stones and partly weathered piece of rocks there is no organic matter in this layer the roots of plants and trees cannot penetrate up to this layer horizon r or bedrock this is the last layer of the soil which consists of unweathered rocks and it is quite hard which cannot be broken even with a spade factors that affecting the formation of soil the sun it is responsible for breaking down the rocks into smaller pieces and forming cracks in between them the sun's radiation heat up the rocks during the daytime as a result the rocks expand but during the night these rocks cools down and they for contract all the parts of the rocks may not cool down or heat up at the same time all this leads to the formation of cracks in them and ultimately breaks them down water water gets into the cracks of the rocks and freezes down there and this leads to the widening of the crack flowing water often carries pieces of rocks all way away and on that path they get broken down into smaller pieces as they rub against each other and also due to pressure of the flowing water this is one of the reason why soil is formed far away from the parent rock winds winds can bear down the rocks and break them strong winds rub against the rock and break them or wear them out down just like water winds also carry away the soil or sand from one place to another living organisms lichens that can grow on the rocks and secrete a certain substance that can powder down a rock which leads to the formation of soil small plants such as mosses often grows on rocks and breaks them down it may also happen that the roots of different plants and trees get into the rock surface and break it down or widen the cracks 
factors that decides the types of soil. The amount of humus present in the soil, the more the humus, the more pores, porous the soil is and deep the soil is. The number of microorganisms in the soil, they help in keeping it fertile. The parent rock, they decide the mineral that are present in the soil. All these factors also decide which kind of plant will grow in that soil. Topsoil. The upper layer of the soil which contains all living organisms and humus is called topsoil. The quality of topsoil is a region that decides the biodiversity of that place. Soil pollution. We know that soil contains different types of substances. All of them are responsible for the sustenance of the biodiversity. When the useful components get removed from the soil, it loses its fertility and leads to decrease in microscopic life in it. This phenomenon is called soil pollution. The causes of soil pollution. Long usage of fertilizers and pesticides leads to the killing of the microorganisms present in it. Without these organisms, the soil would not get recycled and replenished. Earthworms get killed because of the pesticides. They are the ones which that lead to the formation of humus in the soil. Flowing water and wind can carry away the soil particles and often lead to the exposure of rocks. Deforestation can also lead to the soil pollution as the uprooting of trees expose the soil to rain and wind. Industrial activities like mining and extraction of minerals can also lead to the mixture of harmful chemicals in the soil and decay its quality. The effects of soil pollution. It severely affects the growth of plants. It can lead to infertility of soil and thus would resist agriculture on such land. The fertilizers decay the quality of soil. It can affect the health of human beings who consume food grown in soil which has large amount of fertilizer and pesticides mixed in it. It can change the structure of soil thus decaying the growth of useful bacteria and other microorganisms in the soil. Soil erosion. It is a process in which the upper layer of the soil gets washed away thus leading to degradation in the soil's quality. Human activities causing soil degradation. Among this, the over, the major contribution is due to overgrazing, followed by deforestation, followed by agriculture, and seven percent is done by fuel wood gathering, and less than one percent is by industries.